I can see quite a lot of uses of girdle, which are quite mystic um, um, in their kind of uh, uh, the way they're being used. And, and one is sort of about religion that, well, religion is meant to be that transcendent thing that we can't know. Um, but there's something interesting here because it is about um, if you're stuck within a system, um, that there will be a truth which you can't prove is true. Um, so you pull yourselves outside of that system. But we are stuck in our own system, is the universe. And so that's interesting because maybe it says that there are things that by, because we're stuck within the system, we can't pull ourselves out and look, look in. So, uh, so it's got lots of philosophical resonance to it, which I think people find very intriguing. I, I suppose that's why I've been on this journey, uh, to looking into the unknown, because um, uh, you know, if there are things that science can't know, um, then uh, that's kind of interesting on a sort of theological uh, level. Um, I think uh, that there's a, an interesting guy in Oxford called Herbert McCabe, um, who was a theologian, Marxist theologian, quite cool, I thought. Um, uh, but he, he said, you know, uh, uh, the existence of God is the statement that there is an unanswered question about the universe. And if there are questions that will always remain unanswerable, um, well, of course, that was always the first thought about what God was. It was things which we couldn't understand. Um, I mean, people call it the God of the gaps, um, which is actually an interesting derogatory term by theologians saying, well, science was so fierce in its uh, pace of, you know, ad advancing pace of knowledge and um, that they say, well, you know, God isn't the God of the gaps uh, because that's just getting very, very small. Um, but it's interesting, you know, from a scientific point of view, can you identify, uh, I mean, that's what Gödel has done in a way, you know, it's mathematically identified limits to within a system uh, that there's a tr true statement which can't be proved. So can science also uh, articulate its own limits of things which will al always transcend the power of science to know? Or maybe we can know it all. Did the journey that you refer to as a bit of a journey, did it change you or do you see you've come out the other end still with the same viewpoint? I um, took over from Richard Dawkins um, and everyone wondered whether I was going to be, you know, this militant atheist. And I, I certainly declare myself an atheist. Um, but I think that uh, this exploration of the unknown has, has made me realise this is a much more subtle question um, than uh, many of us like to, to think. But that, you know, I think it's still interesting to explore uh, the things which might all, always transcend our knowledge. And, uh, of course, religion just gives these things far too many properties they should never have. Um, uh, but I think that rather abstract idea of the unknown um, it is still quite an intriguing one. And, and if, if that's what one's sort of referring to as uh, things beyond science which uh, we may never know, well, what are those? Maybe as scientists we can identify those. The real worry is what if there's a true statement that I'm working away on um, which actually doesn't have a proof. Now this is a, a big kind of revelation for mathematics because I think ever since the ancient...